Hello, listeners, and welcome to this, the 42nd episode of the Heresy Accountability Buddies podcast. I'm Jacob, and this episode I'm joined by... Duncan. Jack. John. And we're glad to have you with us. Uh, We do have a few announcements before we get to our regularly scheduled show. Uh, The first of which uh, is a thank you on behalf of Jamie and the rest of the Toys for Tots team. Uh, A lot of those donations have started pouring in, and we are extremely grateful uh, for all of that. Very appreciative. Uh, I think he does have a few more items that we are still looking for for the White Scars list. Is that correct? I believe it's for the White Scars list, yes. I think the uh, World Eaters list is already complete. Or at least he has most of what he needs currently for it. Word bearers. Yes, word bearers. Huh? Yes, the word bearers are complete, I believe so. Uh, but he would appreciate donations of battle foam uh, based on any drop pods uh, that are in the list. So as people are able to uh, accommodate him there, he'll continue to be grateful. Uh, he does indicate that White Scars are looking for jet bikes, named characters other than the con, and or other HQ choices, uh, and... Uh, the White Scars specific Leviathan and Contemptor as able. That obviously will depend on uh, the availability because I think aren't we getting the new Contemptor bodies only? And isn't that one one of the ones already out so far? Uh, they're all out now, I believe, or at least they're shortly to be, based on uh, Sunday's previews. I thought so. Uh, otherwise, I think that covers our shoutouts for now. Uh, just to make sure that we're aware, uh, we have started publishing a link to our Discord, uh, through our Facebook page and a few other social sites. Uh, if you would like to join us on Discord, uh, feel free to reach out to ourselves or, uh, either individually or via our email, show at heresypodcast.com. And we would be happy to get you an invite and see you here. It's uh, it, it's it's getting bigger. More people are showing up. It's kind of cool. Very exciting. Um, uh, past that, I think that takes care of our initial announcements. Uh, does anybody want to get us started off with our regularly scheduled hobby progress? Yeah, we skipped last week, so I actually got some stuff done finally. Um. Uh, like I said, I was trying to get the nights all done for Warzone Houston coming up in a few months in September. So I got my Super Sculpey out and my Pasta Roller and started rolling out some bases. And it took me a while to remember how to quite get everything together. But once I did, I got everything tossed in the oven and I started seeing some smoke come out. So I picked up the tray out of the oven, obviously put the, the oven mitts on first. Uh, I've done that mistake before. And uh, started trying to run outside, but the dogs decided that, oh, this is the perfect time to rush the back door to, to go outside. And so as they hit the door, I hit the door, the tray of very hot putty hit the door, and some of it decided to fall on me, and so now I've got some oddball scars on my arm. Um, but luckily everything has been rolled out uh, and, and made correctly, so I've got all the base of the bases ready uh, for all of my knights and armagers. I've got a couple more armagers in the mail. I had to order them from England because everybody in the U.S. is sold out right now. Uh, but that does mean I got them a little cheaper than, than I usually get them. It just took a lot longer to get here. Um, and then I'll be working on those. I got another Taro model or order in to finish off some weapons for everything. And then I uh, got all the lancers and a castus cleaned up to get ready to start working on those this coming week. And then uh, I managed to find some Gundam markers and started trying to kind of test paint a night base since uh, I'm doing the the rollers I talked about. I'm using Green Stuff World Roman uh, Streets roller, so it's got a lot of like inlaid designs on it, and I want to make something that's not just, you know, generic dry brushing or cobblestone like I've done for the last couple armies I've got. And so I wanted something that's a little more in-depth, and so I'm doing some nice white and blue so that they tie a little bit into my Ultramarines, as well as all the dead word bearers on the bases, so that'll, that'll help tie them to some of my other armies. 
And then I managed to get more work done on the Spartans. Uh, I'd said before that I got everything decaled up and sealed up, and I finally got the wash on those. And then I managed to build the rest of the bodies, and I'm working on the Sponsons as we talk tonight. And then... Once those are all ready to go, I'll throw those on the stack with the Kratos's and the Sabres and other tanks. And so my grand hope is not only the Knights, but also a, kind of a pile of Ultramarines armor to go with some of the existing Ultramarines I've got done for Warzone Houston's mega game. Uh, maybe supply an entire quadrant myself. So we'll see how that goes. Cool. As always, you're a, you are a machine, sir. Indeed. Yeah, it, it kind of helps that Texas has decided that this week is going to be insanely wet, and so I didn't have a lot of time to do outside yard work that I really needed to get done. Uh, in fact, my backyard is looking more and more like a weed-soaked um, death world than anything else in the world it could possibly be. But, um, yeah, it's, it's nice being able to get some stuff done around the house, some gaming stuff instead of actual house stuff. Okay. Watch you whip, watch you nae sir. Watch you whip and wor- watch you possibly nae <laughs> No cap. No cap. All busted. Yep. I don't know what any of that stuff means. Is this where I say yeet? Indeed. Yes. In fact, I will yeet the request over to you, sir. What did you get done, Duncan? Oh, um, um, well, I worked, and then I did some overtime at work. And then, and then I uh, did some more work, and I went and I got the Metters miniatures formula for painting Blood Angels, and I have not. I could pick up those paints for trying to do some Blood Angels for uh, next year. Um, I haven't started on them yet because I just haven't got them on my uh, my to do list yet. Um, other than that, I am looking at. Abaddon, or converted Abaddon, because I did not like or want to use the original Forge World Abaddon model. Um, so I used the Forge World Stuns of Horus Terminator Praetor to make an Abaddon, um, using Abaddon's hand, his, uh, his power fisty glove claw thing, and his sword and his head to make him. Oh, and his shoulder pads. Um, I made him, I got him done, other than his base. Um, his nine Justerian bodyguard are all sitting here with the last oil wash drying on them all, along with him. Um, got the decals down. Once the oil wash is dried and done, I will. I don't really have a lot of spot cleaning left to do on them. It's got a little bit of weathering put on them, a final seal, and then their base is to be done. And then I'll be finished with the Justerian squad. Have I ever mentioned how much I hate these top knots? Because if I haven't, I need to. Um, I wish the I wish these top knots were actually a permanent part of the helmet. That would make my life easier, um, rather than having to hope that the peg isn't part of what popped off of the the, uh, the gating when I cut it. Um, but there we are. Other than that, I've assembled some blood angels. Um, specifically, I've got. Uh, uh, ten angels tears with assault cannons done and completed and built. Um, no paint yet because they're not ready for that yet. But I've, these just Aaron will be the final bit I need for my uh, my list for this coming Saturday at the Battle Barn. Um, trying a new heresy, new Sons of Horus list that is slightly different than my normal Sons of Horus list. So we'll see how it goes. Other than that, I haven't done much. Um, Jack, what have you done? Um, I have put together roughly uh, 20 of the special Imperial Fist, uh, not Imperial Fist, yeah, the, yeah, whatever, uh, the, their special uh, shield guys. Names are hard right now. I can't think of any, any names. But the Imperial Fist uh, shield guys, a uh, couple apothecaries, um, all for DevCon for next year. I put paint on their shoulder pads and their helmets so far because that was where to go. Uh, the actual models themselves, I have backpacks to put on them, on 10 of them, and then arms on a different 10. Um, and then that's done. Uh, see here. Uh, came up with a list for the barn event next week. 
Um, and then I have I did a How I Paint Yellow YouTube video that I put up today. Uh, so that's up and going. And um, yeah, outside of that, work has been basically kicking my butt. So, Jacob, what about you, sir? I know uh, work may not been kicking your butt, but other things have been. Um, well, I was going to say, I, I think time. I know where you got some of those shieldy guys. Oh, yeah. Thank you for that, sir. Yeah, uh, a lot of a lot of working around the house, uh, somewhere in the neighborhood of one to two hours a night, just trying to unpack boxes, trying to figure out what's going to garage sale piles, what's going to giveaway piles, and uh, what what's uh, duplicates that we can use, what's duplicates we can't use. Um, but overall, really, really strong progress. Um, there was uh, a little bit of excitement with uh, helping my folks with their move. Uh, which came down to some uh, vehicular issues uh, leading to a last minute, hey, can you come pick up this U-Haul and help us move everything out of it and into a different U-Haul? That's a lot of fun. Um, uh, past that, I have actually started doing hobby stuff again. Uh, it turns out that uh, after you've got like your kits out of the box and have gotten them partially assembled, that's when they take up the most space. Uh, and so I am trying to, since most of my heresy stuff is generally pretty well like cataloged and shelved, uh, some of my odds and ends minis games... Star Wars Legion, uh, had a couple buddies who are trying to get into Carnival after their trip to Adepticon, and uh, I think like my Wild West Exodus stuff, uh, sort of those those odd skirmish games I've picked up here and there. I've got a few, or more than a few models uh, left in various states of completion that I'm really trying to hammer down on, get them complete, get them in foam, get them packed away somewhere. Uh, and then worry about who and what is getting painted when. Um, as far as heresy, uh, I I think I made a list. Uh, I think I made a list that I've been super, super excited with. Uh, Duncan got to see at least a little bit of it, and he and I talked about it a, a little bit in depth, uh, trying to use the new coils of the Hydra uh, to try to capture some of the feeling that I had from my old coils of the Hydra list. Uh, both in terms of like stacking buffs for various gameplay benefits, uh, as well as the the capacity to really bring in some firepower from reserves and and try to sucker punch somebody with it. Um, turns out that uh, Coils of the Hydra gives you plus one to hit in all phases when you arrive from outflank, uh, and that gets really really awful when you combine it with preferred enemy everything from Alpharius. Um, I'm, I'm hoping to get the list playtested. Uh, it probably won't happen before Martinsville, but at least by the end of June uh, to figure out if that's a, that's a list that I'm going to see myself aiming for, at least in the, in the not-too-distant future. Uh, if I could get that together in time, if not for Nashville outright, then for Michigan, uh, I'd, I'd be pretty okay with myself then. I dig that. I dig that. I, uh, I still, as I said before... I like the look of that list. I'm 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 excited, and I I think uh, big shout to uh, to our buddy Kurt. Uh, he really talked about how he felt like he was missing <laughs> in army construction the the feeling of of a narrative reason for a force to be what it was, rather than just taking all these things that interlock, whether mechanically or or otherwise. Uh, rather than for the sake of a greater narrative. Uh, and so being able to steal some of the Space Wolves units for Coils of the Hydra and use that to sort of pervert or twist uh, their Pale Hunter Rite of War, which is kind of built on the back of that outflank rule, uh, that that to me is is pretty pretty cool for a false flag operation. So we'll, we'll see how that shakes out. I don't know if I'm going to take my stuff on the tabletop uh, or that starts the game on the table if I if I stick with the list. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to try to uh, hit that with some AK Interactive or some Hairspray and then uh, do it up to try to ape uh, Kurt's Space Wolf scheme uh, and, and really try to invest in the false flag, but... Uh, Got to got to walk before I can run, and that means that means doing some play testing. But uh, it's more excited that I've been about a list that I've written for Heresy since the new edition came out, and that's a, that's a big step for me. 
I can hear it in your voice, and it sounds like a cool list. Agreed. Yeah, I think I I think I posted it to uh, to the list building channel on the Discord and kind of bandied it around, but uh, may have been in kind of off hours where the Thousand Suns and the Alpha or the Thousand Suns and the Raven Guard lists I'd been working on had been getting a lot more traction. Um, that one that one didn't spark quite so much discussion, but hey, you win some, you lose some. Uh, otherwise, anybody have any last notes on hobby progress before we uh, talk about what looks like our previews for this coming week's pre-orders? Uh, I also went ahead and did a conversion world order uh, before they close up to uh, get bits of special swords and axes do, and such. Do we know the last official day for business for them? June I, 6th, I think. It's I believe so. Okay, real, so that's yeah. that's really important to call out to folks. If you've yeah, liked if, if, their bits, if you've used them in your army, if you want to use them to just tidy up a unit here or there, get those last orders in before they close up shop. We're uh, sad to see them go, but that's kind of the nature of the beast over time, unfortunately, for a lot of these uh, third parties. Yep, he did say that he's going to try to put some of the stuff, make it available through... Uh, not cults 3D, um, Shapeways, but he doesn't know when or how long or anything like that. Yeah, and it's weird because he just dropped a bunch of new shoulder pads that I was on. Yeah. Uh, luckily, I think I have enough of the... the... not... the totally not custode swords that he makes that I wanted to replace all my custode swords with. Yeah, I... Uh, I'm really kind of sad to see him go because I really like a lot of his stuff. Yeah, I... He was one of the better ones. I just the thing I the only the only complaint I ever had about him was shipping times. Yeah, I mean I can't really say anything really there. Really well, I never got anything broken from him, even though I was always worried about it. I never did. Yep, and every time I order from him, I seem to get like an extra Gladius somehow. And yep. I never ordered a single Gladius, but I have like three or four of them rattling around somewhere. Yeah, I've got some extra chain swords from that. He's a, he's a good guy. Yeah, he's a solid guy. Um, if anyone out there who's listening wants to get you special unique swords, bits, spears, axes, maces, and shoulder pads, and spe- yeah. and uh, shields, hands, go too. there. Yeah, hands. Customizable, moldable hands, specifically for heresy marines. Go to the uh, conversionworld.de and get them before he closes down, because unfortunately, he's not going to be with us much longer. Well. Hopefully he'll still be with us, with us, just not... Well, yeah, just the company selling the bits. Not producing. Yeah, yeah. Which kind of leads us into a sad fact that um, we got an email or a a Facebook notification yesterday that we lost Kathy Wapple. She was really a a token of all painting events. I I say Adepticon, but she was also... She would also come out down here to ReaperCon in, in Dallas and, uh, She's really kind of the light of the world. She was a, a good woman. She would always stay up late, and her and James would talk painting and talk shop and really talk anything. I know I stayed up. My first Adepticon, I was hanging out with them. We stayed up till 3 a.m. just talking uh, medical stuff and things like that because I was working at a medical billing company at the time. But uh, good people. Yeah, good she, was, she was absolutely cool. I only ever talked to her, I think, once or twice. But um, both times I did, she was cool. Yeah. Always friendly, always interested in, in what I was doing, what I was working on. Absolutely judgment-free. A wonderful person. And she will absolutely be missed. Yep. Cancer sucks. Yes, it, it does. does. I was caught her in the elevator, and she was always super nice. Super nice when the when the missing kids came up one year or two years, so yeah. So rest in peace, Kathy. You uh, you are missed. Absolutely the case. Uh, sorry to sorry to see and to hear of her passing, and hoping that uh, hoping that James and uh, their family are are doing as well as they can hope to in a time like this. Yeah. On that note, uh, to to kind of peel back to our regularly scheduled topics, uh, we do have a few of our uh, like pre-orders for this week and previews of orders for the coming week. Yeah, 
Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so it's it's a usual Sunday. So GW does their, you know, what's coming up next week in your hobby, and this week the floodgates open for Heresy. So, holy cow, we are getting the last of the Contemptor torsos. Hooray! We're getting a bunch of re-releases of 40k models that work for Heresy. So. Uh, Captain Kronos, the Ultramarines, and a bunch of other guys that are coming back to f in pr to production. Anything else coming out? I, I must have missed it. Uh, uh, Vindic Vindicator. Seems well, so. oh, yeah, yeah, the before, Vindicator. before we get to those, uh, do we want to talk about how uh, we, we may have been uh, kind of uh, faked out a little bit in the, in the last 72-odd hours? Somebody, I have no idea what you mean, sir. Somebody brought to our attention that the Space Wolf Mark VI heads had gone missing from Forge World. Uh, and said person may have been recycling some scuttlebutt that they may have either created or have heard through the grapevine that uh, those heads were gone, gone. Uh, that sales had been poor. The model or the molds were already due for for refresh after the first production run, and just were not going to be refreshed. Uh, only for us to find said helmets back on the web store today, from the looks of things. Uh, quite the yep. surprise, at least for me. Um, but uh, that did inspire us to take a, a little bit of a line. With regard to the pre-order of the uh, Deimos Command Rhino that's gone up. For those of you unaware, Forge World has put their Deimos Command Rhino kit, which at this time appears to be a radar dish and a replacement top hatch for the current plastic Deimos Rhino. There's there's one more bit. And also that's also a bobble. That's What's... the bobble that goes on the, the right rear track. Ah, or okay. above the right rear track. Okay, I I do see that there. Yeah. Um Don't forget the So so those small components uh are now being sold at 55 US dollars. Please keep in mind listeners that when we like bring up some of our frustration here, the Rhino kit itself. This is just an upgrade kit. It does not contain the plastic Rhino. The Rhino kit itself is 50 US dollars. So they want you to more than double the cost of your Rhino kit on this radar dish and uh box spare tire kit. <laughs> shall we I shall we call it? Um I didn't mind the the Dimos Rhino before when it was $55 when you got an interior as well. You got like a whole console that took up the entire sidewall. You got two Space Marines seated on at the console, typing away. Like I thought that was cool. So, are you talking the old Command Rhino, or was that the old uh, Deimos from from Forge World back when that was that was there? Yeah, that, was, that was the old Command Rhino. Okay, okay, yeah. That so was, the old Damocles before this. Yeah, that was fifty bucks, I think. Mm -hmm. And I can't tell you how many times I saw that interior um, cut out and used for other stuff. Like this is a a key objective in the center of whatever it's a wrecked rhino with yep. marines there and i always thought that was something that was kind of neat to see but that made sense yeah this this, this th idea th of doubling the cost of your rhino for some resin bits and bobs uh is is not the sort of behavior that we want to support ultimately uh and so for our money rather than just complaining hey this is not okay in the same way that that we would encourage our our listeners, that if you do like a, a product, buy it. If you don't like a product, don't buy it. And if enough of you don't like it, Games Workshop will learn something has to change. Uh, we would like to steer you honestly in the direction of Cromlack. Uh, Cromlack, unfortunately, does not have the uh, little run-flat kit bump that will stick off the side of your Rhino, but does sell a replacement top hatch and radar dish uh, that I think are just in the neighborhood of like 15 to 20 bucks. Um, that might still be too rich for your blood, uh, and if you and your opponent are okay with it, they do sell for under $10 uh, a replacement like Cupola for for those 
uh, bolter mount locations on the Deimos Rhino uh, that you can drop a radar dish into there. Uh, please uh, not only support Cromlech uh, and others who have made lovely bits for this game, uh, but also if, if you think that it's ridiculous that Games Workshop would like to charge you more than the same amount as what you've already paid for a given kit uh, just to upgrade it, uh, please vote with your wallets. Not that, not that we all don't spend money on GW product to begin with, but sometimes it just it just doesn't make sense. Yeah, and we've said before that we're going to stay fair. You know, we will complain if complaining is necessary, and I don't think this is just a complaint for complainer's sake. I think fifty five dollars for what amounts to the amount of resin that comes in one or two Space Marines is a little expensive, and I, I and I want to put on my devil's advocate hat and i can say well you know you're only gonna buy one but at the same time I'd, if they price it cheaper you'd probably see a little a lot more armies yeah oh yeah it's, because how many people don't have a rhino kicking around and suddenly it's like oh you know what if i've only got two for two tactical squads maybe i grab a third chassis just to see what it opens for my list construction options and and to see what mounting a radar dish on it looks like in my lists i completely agree with that if you if you costed this a little more aggressively i think there's a big chance that you see that you see a spike in sales uh who knows maybe maybe somebody was trying to suss out whether the right play was to either sell it like this or to sell it as a full dish plus rhino kit uh and the the person saying now nah, let's just do the upgrade kit one out uh, but unfortunately, that meant that they couldn't they couldn't package it quite the same. Um, and so I, I can't be completely upset that they did take the upgrade kit route. I think that that's pretty cool. Yep. Yeah, I'd rather I'd rather have the ability to buy the kit separately, unlike what they've done with a lot of the more recent weapons and things like that. Specifically, when you look at some of the Titanicus releases and the Sakaran releases of old. But. Um, yeah, the prohibitive price tag makes it really wonky. Uh, peeling away from that, though, we did get some more concrete details out of the, the book and some of the releases around it. Uh, somebody want to give us the rundown on this 240-page book and some of the actually, things coming with it? Actually, before we get to that, because I know we're all hyped about that, can we talk about the vehicle upgrade kit that's being put into the Mastodon, the Bombard... Um, the Fellblade and its variants, and the Javelin. Gladly. What's uh, what's gnawing at your brain? So the, fact that the Javelin didn't get all the guns that it should have. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm not complaining about the rules that that where we don't have certain sp bits and pieces for the Javelin, and I'm fine with that. Um, I think GW missed a mark, and I'm not saying this is a bad thing. I'm not saying this is a good thing. I think they could have possibly knocked it out of the park if they had dropped this plastic upgrade weapon sprue for these vehicles as a solo bit. Um, I know for a fact I would have bought about four to six of them myself. If they would drop just that, that's the, uh, the Sponson sprue. Well, yeah, the, the like a Sponson only or Cupola only or however it is, or Sponson and Cupola, whatever. If they would drop that alone, I think people like us who have bits hovering around and magnetized javelins and magnetized fell blades and magnetized this and magnetized that, I think just about every one of us would reach out and would pre-order the ever-loving crap out of that and would get so many of them that it's ridiculous. And GW would be like, oh, well, maybe this is a hit. Maybe we should put out more things like this. I mean, it's not a big gripe. I know, but I really wish wrong. they would have done that. Yeah, yeah. The... I mean, you're not wrong. The I when the when the plastic Sponson first came out, I hit eBay to kind of see what they were going for, and they're going for forty bucks a Sponson, a side, just for the empty spot or forty dollars for the empty Sponsons with no guns for the pair, and the guns are ten to fifteen each. I mean, GW should be getting that money. To be completely honest with you. Yeah. Yeah. No, I yeah. agree. Um, and they, they, they have they the means. The weapons. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't want to go out and buy all new javelins for 120 bucks and replace all the javelins I already have 
Well, and especially because they never did a resin bit to put the multi melta on there. This would be very appealing, just like we talked about with, with the radar dish. If you would have put out just the Sponson and Cupola kits uh, to, to even just let people retrofit their old javelins, I bet a lot, a lot of people wouldn't have, would have taken you up on that. Yeah, it wouldn't have just been javelins either. Like, I would have bought a bunch for my Predators so I can keep those updated. I mean, as it stands, there are other methods to get them with, you know the high seas and whatnot, but at the same time, I'd rather just give GW the money because I enjoy working with plastic more than I enjoy working with resin made from terrible things. Yeah, I I think that's that's a really prescient point that uh, we've made a few times before that that piracy most often is a is a availability and accessibility problem rather than a product problem. And, I've been and saying for since all the... Yeah, for all the Games Workshop has has by hook or by crook taken the litigious route to address what they feel like are improper practices in the in the secondary market. Uh, their their refusal to more directly combat it is is definitely disappointing to see routinely. Especially because we see on you know we've we've just gotten the the heavy weapons releases, we've gotten the contemptor weapons releases, we've got on the. Uh, timeline melee weapons releases like it seems like they're trying to turn this corner of supplying what we want in every facet and then it seems like they drop the ball from knocking it out of the park yeah i mean it, it seems like they came really 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 close to a full up win yep and it maybe maybe i'm wrong and maybe they're actually going to drop it on its own after a while in which case Kudos, win still resolved, but I don't want to have to go out and buy another javelin to upgrade the javelin I've already got assembled and painted and magnetized. Yeah, my my nine would love to have Volkites, free yeah. Volkite upgrades. Um, the Blood Angel javelins I have that are somewhere over there, I think there's like six or eight of them, would love to be able to put assault cannons and Volkites on there. Okay, I'd, I'd love to put assault cannons and assault cannons on the sides. But still, you get what I mean. Yeah, I thought that was odd that they didn't give them heavy flamer sides. I guess that was just to prevent that. the assault cannon upgrades or the the uh, salamanders and death guard as well going crazy with it. Yeah, I mean, I can understand why, honestly. But, you know, it's not a gripe. It's not a complaint. It's just I think they could have knocked this out of the park with just a little bit more thought. Yep. Anyway, that was all I wanted to bring up. Yeah, more than reasonable. Uh, we do have the, the Vindicator kit that we indicated. Not sure that includes the Laser Vindicator at this time. Uh, does anybody know if they explicitly call that out in the article? Or are they going to split this into two separate kits like they're uh, tracking to do with the uh, Sakaran chassis? It looks like it's going to be two. There's no yeah, definitive two. either way on the on the article. Womp womp. Uh, but, you know, that's that's not the worst thing. Um, we do see that for the Sons of Horus character, he will be coming with a bear-headed option. Yay, because I'm so looking forward to having another bear head that I don't want to use. Uh, oh, and the, the Terminator will have the same. Uh, you know, I do I think it's amazing? No. But do I know that some people really do like bear heads? And even if their opinions are wrong, um, I, I still applaud the fact that, that they can have the option available to them. I agree, and I like the fact that they have various heads other than just in the helmet. My only concern, and this is realistically just a personal quibble, um, I don't see the sense of walking around in this suit of war plate with your head uncovered. It's, it's pretty much just screams, shoot me here, to me. Oh, I but that's agree. just me. Uh, we do see that the Infernus Abomination that got previewed, that's going to get a full rules release in Siege of Chthonia. I'll, uh, I'll count myself surprised there, um, but I suppose if we don't immediately have plans or a track to get a Liber Demonica, uh, that this is, this is the next best way to get him and to get him as a core choice, no less. I still want the model. In fact, I realistically want all the models. The I want I want the the fist, 
I want the thousand, the uh, Sons of Horus guy, and I want the uh, Abomination. Ooh, I have so many ideas on stuff I could do with that. Yeah, and then we're also getting uh, the last six eggs, it looks like. Word Bearers, Thousand Sons, Raven Guard, Ultramarine, Salamanders, and Alpha Legion. Uh, I think some of those are a little more successful than others as as add-on kits. I don't think the, the Salamanders, Ultramarines, or Thousand Sons are unsuccessful, but I def definitely feel like the Word Bearers, Raven Guard, and Alpha Legion lose out on some things by not having the custom arms and legs that those got designed with around them. Yep. I agree. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not complaining about those, um, because for people who do not have that or do not have the ones that we all have from years ago, because we've been around forever. I like the fact that they're putting these out. Um, I do, however, wish that they would just put the old one back out, but I understand if they have to reduce their range, they do. Uh, and we did also see a street date coming up for the uh, Despoiler Upgrade Kit, which uh, indicate that add some close combat punch to your Legion with this set of upgrades designed for use alongside plastic... Mark 2, 4, 5, and 6. Uh, so I, I hope the intern miskeyed uh, Mark 2 as Mark 3. Or vice versa, I should say. Uh, but that rumored uh, armor upgrade, we actually just mentioned it in the last show, where we wondered if that was going to be Mark 5, the stuff that looked like the weird mishmash of 2 and 3. Uh, that door is certainly open here based on potentially the uh, the wording here. Yep. Uh, I, I, I don't know what to say. Um, I'm looking forward to more armor. And while my despoilers I'm currently using don't need these upgrade kits, I know there are people out there who do, and I'm glad it's coming out, but I'm not going to get any. I definitely am in a typo camp, but I think it's a cool upgrade set. I, I agree it's it's a fine upgrade for those who are pursuing it. Uh, I'll be interested to see what the cost is. Uh, I hope that this is this is a competitive product ultimately. Uh, I know that there's a lot a lot of uh, third parties who are producing bolt pistol chainsword kits uh, and so I, I really hope that this is in some way disruptive to that market. I do have one very minor gripe about this kit. And I'm going to go ahead and say it now. If you look at the actual chain swords and you look at the actual bolt pistols, they look different in style compared to what we see in the various upgrade kits we're all used to at this point. The chain swords look different. The bolt pistols look different. It's just not really. It's kind of like the uh, the uncanny valley in some ways, where it's you're used to seeing everything in one way, and this looks close enough to where it would be recognizable as that but it just looks slightly off if you get what i mean yeah and you would think since they're just a cad file that you could have just copied it over maybe yeah likely so it's just something about it kind of sets my teeth on edge you know what i mean yep yeah i i um i use a lot of the scout bolt pistol that came with the uh the plastic scout kit for some of my assault marines when i was building a bunch of those early on and then a bunch of um 3D printed ones as well that, that match the more Forge World designs. But yeah, these ones are definitely interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Anybody else? Any notes on uh, our previews and pre-orders before we head to our next segment? I do like the fact that they have released Kronos the same time that this book gets released because of that new um, Sigerian upgrade. Yeah, so now yeah. Kronos for that. Yeah, he's he's a good source of Mark Three bits. I will tell you that I've got him on a few characters I've converted. I uh, I'm also going to go ahead and say, um, two hundred and forty pages. Yeah, it's a bit bigger than we thought. <laughs> yeah, two hundred and forty pages. Ooh, that's going to be a lot of fluff. That's going to be. A lot of rules, more campaign stuff, new uh, new units. ZM. Yep. I'm Inducti. I'm really looking forward to seeing what these rules are for the Inducti. Yeah, I will admit that I've the way I 
stationed everything that I'm working on is kind of holding off on building all of my Mark VI from the boxes because I don't know what the inducti are. Yeah, um, I'm not going to lie. I've read all the novels. Um, I've read about the inducti in the rules before where they were the, the, the world eater tied to Galen Serlak. Um, I'm looking forward to what they have done for everyone. And I'm very hopeful. Yeah, I, I'm always I'm always interested to see what they can do with with more might be core choices, just to just to see how it shakes out. Um, yeah. Though I have some concerns about like, are they still going to have line? Are they still going to be weapons ballistics four? Um, but it'll it'll at the very least just be interesting to be able to have a new unit entry. Hopefully, that's worth talking about and having discussion about. I don't know, what could they lose and what points could they be removed to make them an appetizing choice? Like, that's, that's the, the question right there. Lose one well, leadership, lose one ballista skill, and they you take off five points? The, the, uh, the inducti in the, in the actual first book, The Solar War, where they're talking about the Sons of Horus inducti who were being used to assault, I think it was Pluto, or Pluto's moon, one of the two. Um, those guys in that seem to be more close combat oriented. So, yeah, losing a ballistic seal would make sense, but they also seemed a bit more ferocious. So maybe lose the ballistic skill, lose Fury maybe charge. furious charge or rage, maybe. Um, or, and this is a big thing, maybe lose an initiative as well rather than leadership because they're newer. They're not quite as fast yet. They're tweaking out and get hit easier. Yep. Both things things would make sense to me. I wouldn't bump them to weapon skill five. I'd leave them as a four. I was saying but drop them. Drop them to weapon skill three? Yeah. If you can buy them in bulk and cheap enough, drop them to weapon skill three. Hmm, maybe. We'll have to see. All I know is that uh, I look forward to seeing what they are, and yep. I look forward to building some of them. Yep. On the subject of uh, unit entries that you don't often hear talked about, I think that takes us to uh, to the the segment of our show we were hoping to get to tonight, which is, uh, "Hey, I think destroyers are cool. How do I make them work?" Is that uh, is that about a fair way to phrase it as possible, there, Duncan? You uh, pitched the segment. Oh, yes, I I, I did pitch the segment, didn't I? Hmm. Well. Destroyers. Let's let's go ahead and and at least bring up. Destroyers yeah. have changed from last edition. Whatever points changes, whatever rules changes, the the big one, for my money, that stands out, is that they now have bitter duty instead of whatever they had before. Previously, I was under the impression that your Legion Destroyers could not benefit from any rule from anybody other than a Moritat who could give them Scout. Uh, so if, like, your Primarch gave an army-wide rule, Destroyers didn't get to claim the benefits of it. Um, and so that's, that's a tremendous change this edition that that's no longer the case. They do still have Bitter Duty. Bitter Duty means that unless your character has that rule, uh, or you have the ability to, like, give it to Apothecaries or Tech Marines, they cannot join the squad. So that's still there, uh, and the Moritat does still grant them the ability to scout, uh, which in turn will confer outflank. Um, but that's, that's a big change to them. As well as for the non-jump pack guys... Uh, they get two gun options that the jump pack guys don't get. So the jump pack squad, for every five models, one can take a missile launcher with suspensor web and rad missiles. The suspensor web is because these guys, uh, even though they do dirty deeds dirt cheap, uh, they are not veterans, they don't have relentless, um... They can take a Toxifarin Flamer, or they can take a Plasma Pistol. For the on-foot squad, per every five models, you can still take the Missile Launcher, the Toxifarin Flamer, or the Plasma Pistol. Uh, you can also opt for a Grav Gun with Suspensor Web, 
Um, if I'm right, isn't the normal grav gun range like 18 inches? So yes. the suspensor web, does that still have the range like it did last edition? Um, without going to that uh, bits unit entry in the appendix or in the weapon stuff, I would not be able to say yes or no. Let's, Give me a moment while I'm flipping to that part. Magically that it does. Uh Clipping you down to a 9-inch range does make that tricky, but uh, if you need to deal with dreadnoughts, uh, it is an option. Uh, and then one of the more interesting options is the Disintegrator. Uh, the Disintegrator is a rapid-fire 24-inch weapon, strength 5, AP 2, gets hot, instant death. That, in and of itself, is pretty interesting. Uh, do keep in mind that your uh, more attack can actually take two Disintegrator pistols, if he so chooses. Uh, he can chain fire those, but he will get hot on a one or a two. He cannot reroll those dice, and once one of them gets hot, he immediately has to stop shooting with it. Uh, but Let me you... read the suspensor web real quick. Yeah. We're, we're actually kind of wrong. Um, a heavy weapon with a suspensor web may be treated as having the type of salt rather than heavy when used to attack as part of any shooting attack at targets at up to half the weapon's usual maximum range. So it does not cut you in like all the way down on uh, your range. It just means that at half range, you're getting full ballistic seal yeah, rather than you can shooting. choose, it sounds like, you can choose on a heavy weapon to count yourself as an assault weapon, but half range. Yep. So if you sat still, you would get the full 18 out of the grav gun, but if you're moving around, it is going to clamp you to 9. Yeah, so it's it's a little bit of a 6 and 1, half dozen of the other. Um, the grav gun will make you better against dreadnoughts, uh, but the disintegrator, it's not bad against dreadnoughts, uh, but it does have a little more punching power against infantry. Yeah. Um, all things being equal, I don't think I would put a lot of heavy weapons on any of the destroyer, various destroyer squads, except the Blood Angel one, which I'll get to eventually. Yeah. So uh, as far as the difference between the two destroyer squads, uh, there's about 25 points difference between them. They're both an elite's choice. Uh, the one that is more expensive does have jump packs, uh, and then both have two bolt pistols, chain swords, rad, frag, and crack grenades, uh, and power armor. They do still gain their Legions of Stardis rule. They are stubborn. They have counterattack one and bitter duty. Yes. Uh, other things of note: uh, the sergeant does get to take a thunder hammer. He's not weapon skill 5 like veterans, uh, so your your mileage may vary on that very expensive pickup at 25 points, but it's available to you. Uh, the sergeant can also take a single Phosphex bomb. I uh, would not take him with a Power Fist or a Thunder Hammer. The only weapon upgrade I'd give to him would be a Heavy Chain Sword. Why say you on the Heavy Chain Sword? Because the Destroyer Squad comes with rad grenades and in that first turn if you charge or if they charge you you're reducing your opponents down to what toughness minus one against ye old generic marine squad or any vanilla flavored marines they become toughness uh, three and a heavy chain sword is plus two to your strength congratulations you can double that with a chain sword uh i'm i'm just gonna pitch it here for the suggestion it's not that much more expensive to go to a power mall, and the power mall still leaves you strength six, but does give you, uh, what, the AP four kick, and if I'm right, it's also reach one. Power malls are not reach one, to the best of my knowledge. Oh, okay. That that may have been uh, just like a, a thing on a couple other units that I was looking at, but... No, they're, uh, they're, strength, two, they're strength plus two and AP three, but I don't think that they have reach. Um, checking. Hold on. Okay, that's... You are correct. That is what they picked up is AP3 standing. They were previously AP4. So, honestly, yeah, for the for the extra couple points, I think going from the Heavy Chainsword to a Power Mall, where you still get to claim Dual Armed, and your Sergeant's three attacks base already, that's pretty respectable. 
it, it's definitely not. I mean, and you can put a couple given uh, if you're talking about just the um, the the assault squad version. You can put a couple power malls in there. Um, but in reality, I don't think I would put power malls in there. On I don't put a I don't think I'd put a power mall on the sergeant. I think I'd only go with that chain sword. And the only reason I do that is if that sergeant gets into the bog standard challenge against whomsoever is a sergeant wearing artificer armor, the power mall, yes, it helps you. It gives you the strength bump to do a possible instant death. But is it better than having the possibility of re-rolling that one when that comes up? I don't uh, know. I think for the fact that you will make one more attack by having the mall, uh, I think that's worth it for me. That's reasonable. Uh, I, I think there's also room to play with it here as far as if you took a Morita, uh, maybe you elect for uh, a Maul on the Morita and maybe just an Axe on the Squad Sergeant or vice versa on those. Uh, but honestly, the, the Morita, given that he's weapon skill 5 base, uh, if, if he's able to give up one of his three bolt pistols for a thunder hammer, I don't think that's unreasonable on its face either. Mm, I don't think it's unreasonable. I know they're expensive, but uh, weapon skill five tends to tends to make a, a pretty worthwhile platform for that sort of thing, especially when if you're taking either dual volkite plasma or disintegrator pistols, he'll be out of hands. Yeah, you're right. So the thing that I am actually looking to do as, as one of my, like, kicks and grins units for the Alpha Legion is I am actually looking to take a unit of destroyers with a Moritat, uh, disintegrate everybody out, and then use them as part of the outflank so that they, uh, plus uh, throw Volkites on the regular squad members just to see how much, how much anti-infantry punch I can really get on uh, on that outflank turn. Makes sense. Yeah, and then I'm hoping to have, uh, I think, in at least the 3,500-point list, uh, Alpharius is rocking it with a Thunderhammer command squad of uh, Cataphracty guys. I think at 3,000 points, I end up trimming them down to Tartaros, so I don't know if I want to paint that unit twice or if I just want to make it all Tartaros all the time. Um but but definitely trying to have that out there as a as a way to break parity and try to tear down dreadnoughts faster than they can tear me down. Uh, and if you figure that the dreadnought is still brutal three, um, man, by the time I'm having to roll three dice, even though I've got a four up save, I'm probably gonna die. Maybe I give up that four up save, go to just the five up on Tartaros and and try to stay that little bit quicker on the tabletop, get some charges in places where I might not normally. It might not be a bad idea, honestly. Yeah, yeah, uh, and especially with Alpharius being able to hand out uh, after the preferred enemy turn. Uh, I think he gets to give out Fleet 2, and uh, I forget if it's Furious Charge or, or something else over subsequent turns. So, uh, again, kind of a way to boost your mobility and cheat forward a little bit there. Yep, yep, that uh, it definitely makes sense. But if I'm right on it, not counting the Moritat and the two destroy uh, the two disintegrator shots that'll be in the unit itself, um, the the squad should then be eight models with the Volkite pistols, and each pistol shoots twice. So that's thirty-two. Will count as ballistic skill five preferred enemy Volkite shots that that's going to kick out. Now they'll only be strength five Volkite. Uh, but with preferred enemy for picking up ones to wound, uh, I think that that's, that's got a real chance, uh, to, to even make Terminators start hopefully sweating a couple saves, uh, especially with the disintegrators backing it up. Yeah. Um, I really like the destroyers base squad. I never see it on the tabletop and I wish I did. We didn't see it in the tabletop very often last edition. And I'm really, really hoping that people will start giving them a second look because I think they're actually not they're, they're yes, elites is a very crowded um slot for pretty much everybody. But I really think that the destroyer squads and the various destroyer squads deserve a second and possibly even a third look because they really have a lot of potential, a lot of potential this edition with these rules. And that's not even talking about the various Legion-specific destroyer squads. 
Yeah, I know that, uh, what, didn't Death Guard get the Alchem Flamer one in uh, one of the X-Bats, and then Blood Angels have theirs. Uh, There's a couple. Um, Dark Angels have the Dreadwing Interrupters. Mm -hmm. Immortals uh, kind of are... I think they are. Because um, they have Bitter Duty, and eh, they have... They have stubborn. Did we say the regular? Yeah, the the regular destroyers have stubborn. So yep. yeah, yeah. Uh, immortals are definitely like destroyers meet breachers. Yep. Um, let's see. The, uh, there's the uh, the angels tears for blood angel. The ashen for circle angels. for uh, word bearers. They're kind of the original, aren't they? Yep. Um, there's the dark sons of death for um, white scars. Um, the Ultramarines got theirs with all Nemesis bolters. Yep. Um, I guess you could kind of consider Death Sworn to be like them because of the stasis bombs, but not. Uh, I I think that uh, I tend to look for like bitter duty as the well, as well. The, the reason I say that is because the Death Sworn can only be joined. By a caster of runes or a speaker of the dead. Oh, that's fair. Yeah, the whole cult of uh, cult of Morkai thing. Yeah, so it they kind of are and they kind of aren't, and they do have rag grenades, so it kind of fits. Um, yeah. So I mean, as we kind of find out how many legions have their own unique twist on them. Maybe it's uh, it's not necessarily that we just don't see destroyers. It's that we don't see traditional destroyers for a lot of armies. Yeah. Um, and obviously the Legion-specific ones, like um, the Interrupters, are quality. The Angel's Tears are phenomenal. Man, um, I, I even don't hate normal destroyers in a, in a Blood Angel's army once you get Sanguinius on the table, because he gives everybody with jump packs plus one weapon skill on the charge. Yeah. I, I think that that may underscore part of the problem in the current edition is that you have a unit that has rad grenades but has nothing to make it more viable in close combat. No no weapon skill trick, no, uh, no invulnerable save, and short of the sergeant, nobody else can take any power weapons. So... By the time you consider you can't attach an Apothecary or a Tech Marine to kind of cheat more power weapons in those slots, um, you're, you're really hoping to run this unit almost like Space Wolves have run for over a decade now, which is to stand right next to the, enter, uh, the enemy, shoot them a lot, and then wait for them to charge you. Yeah. Um, there is one thing I'm going to kind of say. I think the Generic Destroyers kind of have a little bit of a negative in that they can't take more weapons upgrades for hand to hand. Not that that's a bad thing every, you know, one in five, but when you look at them compared to the other ones, like, and I'm going to use the Angel's Tears as a great example here, the Angel's Tears, you can ditch the, uh, one of their, um, Volkite Serpent uh, Serpentas, yeah, for the Elastic Assault, Assault Cannon, yay, everyone gets Assault Cannons, and you're going to have ridiculous amounts of shooting. But even if you didn't want to go that route, you could put heavy chain swords on every single one of them. And now all of your generic marines with that weapon skill 5 from Sanguinius being on the table and these guys charging, you're all going to be instant deafing anything you touch. Uh, Blood Angels don't get true plus 1 strength on the charge. Doesn't matter. Oh, oh you but have... you're saying you're saying just the weapon skill five kick and yeah. If, so you and give all of them a heavy chain sword for two points because at that point it doesn't make sense to spend eight more points per model to give yeah. all of them the the uh, the mace and yeah. holy Jesus, this thing tears. I mean, this squad at that point would be running base three attacks on the charge, threading their way through ar almost anything with two wounds. And doubling them out. I mean, they would yeah. eviscerate my Reavers. Um, they'd eviscerate pretty much anything they struck before, as long as it wasn't uh, very, very, a lot of Terminators who have uh, the two up. And even then, any one of them that fails that saves is going to chunk on down because they're going to be doubled out. So I think it's, I think the unit really, the units in general as a whole need a very, very heavier look from people and, could probably be one of the most 
unpleasant things you could possibly see on the table. Um, but so you've, you've already like pointed out or, or caught something that I didn't. Uh, even though the non-jump pack squad gets the like the grav gun, the disintegrator, uh, the normal or the the mortalis assault squad does get the uh, one in five can take either a power weapon or a Sharnaball weapon. Now they want a high price on that because it's it's ten points, but. It does mean that if you took whether it's it's the flamer, the the missile launcher, or the plasma pistol, you could have those, and you could either double up or split off, and and still take two extra power weapons in that unit. So you could grab two mauls and a maul or the hammer on the sergeant. Mm -hmm. uh, I would suggest just the maul on the sergeant, but you could you could do some things with that unit. Um, it's. It's definitely different, and I, I think it's got problems by being a close combat unit that doesn't have weapon skill 5, and the only way to get that is um, is Blood Angels. But if you if you have a Legion where you can get plus 1 to hit in close combat and fake it, I'm talking about it with Alpha Legion, uh, Dark Angels can do it, where they could take um, the the... Oath of Swords or whatever, and get plus one to hit with their sword weapons. Um, certainly, certainly viable. Although you won't get the plus one weapon skill on your maces, um, that's still not the worst. Um, no, it, it's not the worst at all. I mean, I I do think though, as we talk about all this, it's it's still worth reasonably highlighting that your. Um, uh, unless you have a way to like outflank them or something, losing the top hatch on the Rhino for them to be able to drive around and pop out of is a huge blow to this unit. Uh, again, unless you have a way to outflank or deep strike them, which again the jump pack unit will do, uh, but the regular unit won't without you stapling a Moritat onto it, and that'll cost you an HQ slot. Um, yep. But I'm just trying to check real quick here. Considering the Terminators are running 175 and 150, which is a slight bit more, but I think you get proportionally even more than these guys. I think the biggest thing that's hampering Destroyer's ability to, to compete for the non-jump pack version outside of you finding special tricks is that Vets are 115 points, weapon skill 5, and 2 wounds a model. No, they won't have rad grenades, but unless you have a way to capitalize on those, those rad grenades are more to save you from a bad charge rather than to reward you for taking a good charge, I feel. I can't really disagree there. Veterans are good. Yeah, and now I'm that, not, now that you can shoot you. both halves of the combi um, and, and have yeah. the ability to, to be relentless with both halves of the combi, you can take more different or or better power weapon access in there uh, as well as arguably better special weapon access uh, you won't have the disintegrator but depending on your total appraisal of the disintegrator taking one in five melta guns is probably better than the one in five disintegrator because you're going to be true strength eight for the purposes of hammering through vehicles for the purposes of just even picking wounds off dreadnoughts here and there uh, to, to say nothing of the ability to hit a Spartan or a Land Raider, uh, crack one of those open and still charge the contents, which the Disintegrator won't do. Uh, and in the meantime, you're still Strength 8 for instant deathing other Astartes. Yeah. Um, man, like I said, I really, I really like the Destroyers. I'd really like to see them on the table more. I'm just... I'm going to start trying to figure out ways to put them in lists because I think they actually have a lot of potential. I wish that they were in fast. If if they were in fast attack slots, I think they'd be a lot better off. Even if the generic special, the, the, the ones for the actual special or the Legion special ones stayed in elites or stayed wherever they are right now, I think if the generic destroyers went into fast, I think you'd see a lot more of them on the table. And I think, I wish that we had a destroyer company right as a generic right because I would love to try that. Yeah, that's that's kind of what's keeping me from finishing mine. Is I've got you know kits for some, and I've got parts for some. I just I've never built them because they're 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 elites. They're going to take up the slot that I'm trying to throw everything else in. And 
like you said, there's no right for it, even though there's tons of fluff about it. Even Ultramarines, you know, there was a couple books about the, the 22nd chapter of just destroyers. And the fact that we don't have a right of war for them is kind of criminal. There was the one from um, Oz 30K that was pretty good. It wasn't great. It was pretty good. Uh, I think that one was fine. So, so uh, this this probably really just sets us up uh, Chekhov's gun style for uh, for the next episode. If destroyers move too fast, how do they stack up against seekers? And we we won't answer that here, but I think seekers are especially now with us slightly coming full circle relative to last edition where seekers got a kind of 11th hour faq that for my money made them more comparable to vets uh they've they've kind of backslid relative to vets this edition but i'd really love to be able to talk about them on the next show i'd be fine with that and if we want even wanted to have a generic comparison and a if all things were equal and they were in the same slot which would you take i'd be fine with that Oh man, it'll be it'll be real hard, I think, to get most players off and away from javelins and sabers in the fast attack slot, but I don't disagree that it would be interesting even just abstractly to see how seekers and uh uh destroyers stack up. But that's for another show. Do we have anything else we want to uh mention in this show before we wrap it up? Um Next week is the book, which I think is going to be pretty awesome. So I look forward to the, the at least the pre-order for that. Maybe we'll get a Heresy Thursday where they actually talk about the book before it drops. That'd yeah, be good. I, I would love to see at least one unit previewed out of it before it drops, but I would be surprised if that happens. Uh, but I think, ultimately, that'll be uh, once we have that book in hand. So that's probably going to be, what, a one to two week lead time? Uh, that'll give us a good chance, yeah, to do Seekers on the next show and then and then be ready to uh, talk the Siege of Chthonia after that book has dropped. Gentlemen. And before we get to that, one last thing I'd like to say. So we're seeing the Siege of Chthonia, and they've already announced that they're going to be doing more campaign books. What do each of us want to see in the next campaign book? Where would you like to see the heresy focus on next? Unfortunately, since we're kind of right up at the Solar War, uh, I'm going to be very surprised if we see it. But I really wish we could have uh, a more complete picture of the Alpha Legion's war against uh, Raven Guard, like the whole Deliverance Lost thing, or or even uh, Korax and the Raven Guard having to having to go against their their Mechanicum. Yeah, that would give us a, a chance to bring in the plastic mechanicum, which I think Heresy needs more plastic armies. I mean, I, we kind of did touch on it last time that that was on the the roadmap, so maybe we'll get them there. But um, I'd like to see Calth or something like that, where they're going to bring back some of the legacy units. I think that's what we really need is more bringing back of the legacy units plus expanding on wherever they put them in. So, like if they do Calth, they could do the. Um, Ultramarine Fulmentaris and the um, Lockutaris, as well as throw in the word bearer stuff. There's a couple ways we could, you know, slowly expand that that way. Just yeah, but that is, that is just retreading black books. I don't know if they're necessarily going to want to do that. That that was my biggest reason for suggesting Deliverance because I don't believe that got uh, a black book pickup, but. Mm -hmm. the but I, I do agree that that's, that's likely where they're going to head is, is campaigns that haven't been documented yet. I'd be very surprised if we circle back unless, unless something happens 10,000 years in the future that requires, a, requires us to retcon the events of a campaign that's already happened. I'd be very surprised if we see that. Did we already see in the actual Black Books the Thramus campaign between Dark Angels and um, Night Lords? Because that's one I personally would love to see. I think that was book nine, wasn't it? Yeah, was it? but it was it was really high level. It wasn't near as as nice as some of the other black books have been. Yeah, it, I, it was it was definitely weird. It. I wonder if that was a result of book nine just kind of being pushed out the door, just like here you go. This will only be good for what two years. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'd, I'd like to see more focus there, because you know, night lords. And 
given how much focus has been paid to the Dark Angels, I could definitely see GW paying more attention to them with that also. Especially with the line having just dropped for 40k. Certainly possible. Uh, otherwise, listeners, gentlemen, thank you for joining me for this 42nd episode of the Heresy Accountabilities Podcast. I've been Jacob, and I've been joined by... Duncan. Jack. Joan. And we're glad you've been here. Remember, stay accountable to your hobby and your buddies, and we'll see you next time. No, we we went the whole show without it, but now we can leave this as an outtake, like after the uh, ending song plays, just to see how many people catch it. Yeah, I mean, we are on the ultimate episode. Yeah, certainly the correct one. All right, guys, I got to pack in. Thanks for joining me. Good night, brother. See you next weekend. This is gentlemen. We'll see you. <laughs>